serving you. If it's not, and you judge yourself for taking this action, you have to undo it by statement and a question. Yes? So you're more gentle and kind with the mind. You're not going after, because it revolts. It will revolt if you try to fight it. Thank you. That's great. And you can explore and, 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 uh, and play with this, yes? Let's say you are, you feel like uh, you had a stressful or busy day or whatever, and you feel like rest, yes? And now the habit, okay, I'll go and take a drink. Okay, you watch this thought. Watch if you're unconsciously how the thought, if you don't see the thought, how it moves your body and suddenly you find yourself with a glass drinking. Or whatever you do, I, I, I don't know. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yet I want you to look at the gap when you are unconscious and suddenly the next thing you're drinking. Yes? Once you'll see the gap, the next step would be is you don't take the action. Okay, you see, oh, here from now I'm going to be unconscious until I get the drink. You're like, okay, I stop, I watch. If you don't take action physically, the desire spinning in the mind gets weaker and weaker. It loses the power. Okay? And all you want to approach it, you want to explore so you study yourself. You're not trying to fight and overcome the addiction. No, that's not your objective. Your objective is to is know yourself. Know yourself is know exactly how everything operates mentally and emotionally and physically on a sensation level in the body. Know yourself is the relationship between mind and matter how they relate to each other, how the mind relates to the body sensation or to thoughts. So you approach it from, I'm going to explore myself. I do not care if I will continue this habit until the body drops. Yet I'm thoroughly going to explore it. And when I realize it doesn't serve me anymore, it will fall like nothing by itself. If you try to suppress it and you don't go and see really what are you trying to avoid and not exploring it, you will keep drinking mentally and might come back to it physically. Yes. Yes. And if you already see it's not serving and you say, okay, I got to get a drink, you just tell the mind, okay, not today, tomorrow. And when tomorrow arrives, you say, okay, not today, the next day. Let's see what happens. I'd like to study what's going on inside me. So this thought is a gift for me. Let me explore what's going on inside me. And maybe I'll go and make a carrot juice or an apple juice. Or maybe I'll drink something that will, will give me, that after I drink it, I would feel like, hmm, it's nourishing. Like, yes. replace it. Just bring a higher vibration. Okay? So, you... Oh, okay. I want to quiet my mind? No, I'm not interested. I'd like to observe how the mind is reacting. Meanwhile, I'll make, for me, a very juice I like. Fresh. <laughs> I'll nourish the body. I'll bring everything to a life. I want... I want a... Uh, make it hard on the liver. I'll give it a break for a moment. Let me explore what's going on inside me. Because I really want to know the truth. I really want to see what am I avoiding inside. Because there's nothing... When you look inside, there's nothing that you cannot meet and see. Nobody gave us tools when we were young. So in order for us when we didn't know how to cope with something, we imagined that it's so bad, 
the, the, the remedy was to avoid it and escape it. If you choose the spiritual path to know the truth, you do, want, do not want to avoid or escape anything inside you. You want to sincerely explore what's going on inside you. You want to study yourself. Yes, I do. Then it's the most interesting. Nothing can compare it. Studying yourself, it's the most interesting anything that life, nothing in life can deliver anything more interesting than that. I realize there, there's probably a lot of things that cause um, behavior like drinking. One may be holding resentments and not being able to forgive and a lot of different things. That would be a whole nother talk here. But um, just the tool that you, that you just gave me, kind of shining my awareness on the, on the, the thought, I uh, really want to drink is a tool that I really want to practice. So it goes like this. If I say, I, I really want to drink, is it true? I'll be happy if I drink, is it true? So before I break it apart, any desire the mind has is because it wants to wake, to return back to who you truly are. Okay? Because it forgot the way, it's looking out. So it desires that if it will fulfill its desires, it imagines that it will be happy. Yeah? So now, I'll be happy if I drink, is it true? Go to your memory and see if you were really happy. And then how miserable you were judging yourself for drinking again, they didn't give you, and then... So it's a whole cycle. And this will... Um, uh, so you bring the state, I'll, it will be better if I drink, is it true? I have to drink, is it true? I cannot do it without a drink, is it true? I cannot experience what I'm experiencing now, is it true? I shouldn't have this kind of thought, is it true? I shouldn't have this thought or addiction, is it true? This addiction is bad, is it true? So this question, everything, so many ideas it brings into the surface. And it's all these ideas are subconscious. So once they come into the surface, they are seen. Who is seeing that, these thoughts? Um, my true self. It's you who sees it. And that's your experience too. Because if you see something, that's a proof that you are not that which is seen. Okay. Can you you see as you have glasses right now, right? Yeah. Okay. You see the glasses. Yes. So are you the glasses? No. No. So that's a proof that you're not the glass. Glasses. Yes. There's no difference internally. When you see the thoughts, and you can really take a look at them by examining them, that's a proof that you're not the thought. Because the thoughts are not permanent, they appear and disappear. Yet your experience that you remain, do, you do not appear and disappear. While they are appearing and disappearing in your presence, so you got to be the background of awareness that does not appear or disappear. You got to be there. You're just behind. The habit is used to think that you are the thought itself, so it captured all the attention. You examine it and it enables the attention, frees it to be broader and broader, boundless. This attention is awareness. Is awareness attentive to itself. When it's not is when it's not narrowed to a thought, to an idea, to a concept. Mm -hmm. And I do not know what inspires you to keep doing this work. 
it's really key that you stay around something or someone or knowledge or words that keep inspiring the mind, turning the attention in. This is hearing the knowledge over and over again. Because right now, as these words are coming, because they're coming from presence, they have power. They are affecting going right into your being. Your being, it's like it soaks it in because you want to know the truth. You want to um, saturate the mind with that as much as you can. Thank you. You I appreciate must, that. You most welcome. I, I love this. I mean, I, I try to immerse myself in, in this kind of knowledge all the time. It's, uh, but it's a battle sometimes when I, you know, fall into addictive behavior. So, I really appreciate uh, tools for staying on the path. And uh, just like I share with people, you can, if you want, you can uh, communicate and be in communication. And uh, I work with people all over. And people, because it is a lifelong commitment. It's not a course. It's not like I'm doing now a course of something. And this is, this is another thing. No. This is, this is, we talk about true liberation, full liberation, yes? That all the, the latencies, all the habits dissolve into your being. We do not know how long it takes and it doesn't really matter. So the mind has to see from within and the mind, something has to waken in the mind to be skilled. To undo itself. It doesn't happen by itself. Because the habit is to go out. It's like to train a, a muscle. I go walking or gym or whatever sport. I can't do it one time and that's it. No, it's a gradual process for the mind. Not for you. You never go through a process. Who you are is changeless awareness. Okay? Yet the mind to return back to who you are requires time and it goes through a process because it was going out through a process. The process of creation is out. The process of evolution returning to you is in. Both take a process. The mind has to awaken and the wisdom inside has to guide the mind to return and it requires knowledge and practice. Is this uh, liberation uh, part of getting off the wheel of transmigration and, and, and escaping being reborn into a body? Yes, of course. Yeah. As long as there is an identification, I am a separate entity, a physical body, all my desires are around objects. So I would take another body and another body. And I need the body in order to, to uh, die from identifying as a physical body. So the body is the greatest gift we have. So it's like a temple or a vehicle. And we got the vehicle. So now the whole work is on the mind. Nothing to do with the body. It's all with the thoughts because the confusion, the forgetfulness, the, ident the false identification, uh, it's all on the thoughts, nowhere else. So if I am aware that it's on the thoughts, I would go and search and examine and work with the thoughts and not with objects, yes? That's very helpful. What about uh, karma? Does going, working with the thoughts help dissolve karma that can keep us here in the transmigration? Of course. Karma is just habits of the past that are 
not examined. It's unexamined beliefs or ideas that there is still trapped there a false misidentification. Karma is of the past, projecting the future, yes? Yet past is a memory and future is imaginary, appearing in the presence of who you are in the moment. So there isn't such karma, yet if I identify with the thought, in the illusion there is karma. In reality, in who you truly are, karma does not exist. Well, thank you. You're most welcome.